Hi guys, welcome to this set of videos. What we're going to do in this set of videos is they'll follow along with the notes that have to do with a translation. Now before we jump into that, first let me remind you of this. Every time we start a new section, we begin to talk about a new topic, we're always going to take a look first at an essential question. That essential question is going to help us focus our learning as we make our way through the notes. The idea is this, by the time we get to the end of this set of notes and these videos, you should be able to answer our essential question. And for this section, that essential question is, oh, sorry, that is a black highlighter, I don't want that. Let's go with a yellow highlighter, that one right there. How? How do you draw the image of a figure under a translation? That's our essential question. That's what you should be able to answer by the time you get done watching this set of videos. Now, in order to answer a question, there are going to be things that you'll need to know how to do, or there's information that you will need to learn that'll all come together to help you answer that essential question. We're going to call those things, the things you need to be able to do or the information you need to learn, our objectives. So as we're going through the notes, right, we're going to take a look at each of these objectives. We're going to talk about them together. We're going to work through several problems together, all trying to help you learn these objectives. And by the time we get to the end of the notes, putting together all of the things we've learned, you should be able to answer our essential question, the focus of this section. So for us, our objectives this time around are going to be that you'll need to be able to identify the coordinates of the vertices of an image. So given an image on a coordinate plane, can you find the coordinates of the vertices? And we'll take a look at that. Then, You'll need to be able to draw the image of a figure using translation vectors. We've actually already taken a look at this in a previous uh, set of notes or a previous um, section of videos. So we'll just sort of refresh your memory on what that's all about. And then students will be able to identify a translation vector. So instead of me giving you the translation vector, what if I give you the pre-image and the image? Can you tell me what the translation vector is? And that's what we're going, that'll be the last thing that we take a look at. So again, as we go through this set of notes, all right, these are going to be our objectives. These are the things we're going to look at, we're gonna talk about, we're gonna to do together. And all of that is going to help you then answer our essential question. So let's jump right into it. Now, before I go too far, I do wanna say this. We have already begun to take a look at transformations. Back in chapter one, section three, we were introduced to this idea of um, transforming an image. We looked at several different types of transformations. We looked at translations, reflections, rotations, and dilations, those four types of transformations. Now, we just looked at them quickly and kind of in general went through a couple of problems together. Now, here in this chapter, we're going to take a much closer look at each of those transformations individually, starting here with a translation. In the next section, we'll look at reflections. The section after that, we'll look at rotations. And the section after that, we'll take a look at dilations, all right? So all of everything that we're gonna kind of do in here is based on what we've already seen back in chapter one, section three. And here, we're just gonna take a look at each of them individually much more in depth. With that background information, let's go ahead and take a look at translations. Now, a translation, let me highlight it for you. Maybe you remember from chapter one, section three, maybe not, no big deal. I put the definition here for you again. A translation slides all points of a figure in the same direction or the same distance in the same direction. Now, how do we do those translations? Well, in order to do those translations, we use something known as a vector. And before I talk about a vector, first let me make a quick movie reference here. One of my favorite movies to watch with my kids is the movie Despicable Me. And if you've seen Despicable Me, you might remember this scene where Gru, the main character, has gone to a bank 
for evil villains to get a loan so that he can build a rocket to steal the moon. Well, he gets to the bank, this evil bank, to get his loan, and he's sitting in the foyer of the bank waiting to meet with um, uh, sort of the guy who's in charge of the bank to get his loan. Anyway, while he's sitting there, he meets another evil villain. Now, Gru is not much for social interactions. He has no interest in talking to this guy whatsoever. So it's this other character, this other evil villain, who winds up sort of being the antagonist throughout the rest of the movie, who does all of the talking. And at one point, there's this great scene where he tells Gru his name. He says, hi, my name is Vector. The reason they call me Vector is because I'm, create, I'm committing crimes of both magnitude and direction. And he does this little dance, was like, oh yeah. And really, really great scene. Why I like that scene so much is because of sort of the, um, I don't know, just the great reference it is to an actual thing we use in mathematics, vectors. Go ahead and take a look at the definition considering that line in the movie where he says, uh, they call me vector because I'm creating crimes of both magnitude and direction. Well, look at our definition for a vector. A vector is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction, both magnitude and direction. So I, I just really love that sort of reference to vectors, which we use a lot in math and physics, um, and the fact that it made it into a children's movie just tickles me pink, I love it. Now, let's talk a little bit about vectors and how we name them. Remember, geometry is its own language. You need to be able to speak the language of geometry, but you also need to be able to read and write the language of geometry. So how are we gonna go about naming these vectors? Well, first let me draw a vector for you. We'll call that point E. We're gonna pick another point. I'll put it right there. We're gonna call that point F and we're just going to draw an arrow from one point to the other. Now, here's the way it works. The initial point of the vector, of course, being the starting point for us, that'll be point E. The terminal point of the vector is the ending point. Where is the end of that vector? Where's that vector headed? Now, the way that we name these vectors, you can either name the vector by the points, the, um, the starting point and the ending point, the starting point of the vector and the terminal point of the vector. In this case, it would be the vector EF because those are my starting and ending points. And then what we're going to do is use this symbol that is a arrow pointing in one direction, but it's only a half arrow. Please notice that it is not, right? I'm not drawing a, let me do it in right here. I'm not drawing a full arrow. We use that to indicate a ray, right? That is for a ray, which is not what I have here. I have a vector. So we're going to draw an arrow pointing in one direction, but only draw half of the arrow. That is going to represent a vector. And then just like when it came to lines, when it came to a line, you could name the line by two points on the line. So we can name a vector by two points on the vector. But you could also name the line with a lowercase italicized letter. Same thing here. We could name the vector using a lowercase italicized letter, in this case, V for vector, but either way, you still need to put that little half arrow above it so that we know we're talking about a vector. All right, so now that we know how to name vectors and kind of what we're looking for, let's just jump right into these problems. Really not that complicated. I want you to draw the image of the pre-image, so I've given you a pre-image already graphed and translating it along the vector that has been given. So hopefully you can see this. I've got a triangle there for you in red. That's our pre-image. The vector is in green. That is our translation. We're going to translate every point, every point in our triangle, that magnitude and that direction along that vector. So here's how you're going to do it. First thing you're gonna to need to do is figure out what we're going to call the components of the vector. How far horizontally does the vector shift our, uh, our pre-image and how far up or down, how far vertically does our vector shift our pre-image. So if I go and take a look at this, it looks like my vector is going to shift all of the points horizontally, in fact, in this case, to the right, one, two, three, four units to the right. So it's four units to the right, and then it looks to me like it's gonna be two 
units up. So I need to take every point in my pre-image and shift it four units right and two units up and that will get me my image. Let me go ahead and name these points. We'll call that one point A, B, and C, and here we go. I'm gonna take point A. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four to the right, and two up. That's gonna put me, actually, sorry, let me do it in a different color. Um, I've got yellow here. There we go, we'll do it in yellow. And then I need to take point B, four units to the right, two units up, one, two, three, four, and up two. That is going to be B prime, sorry, that is my A prime. And then C prime, same thing, four units to the right, two units up, right? Everybody gets shifted the same magnitude and the same direction. One, two, three, four, one, two, oh, sorry, C prime is gonna be right over my B, and then I go ahead and connect my points draw my triangle, and what I've got there is, of course, my image. Now, please notice that from A to A prime, and from B to B prime, and C to C prime, they've all been shifted the exact same magnitude and direction. They've all been shifted along the vector that I was given. That is a translation, all right? We're shifting every point that same direction. So, now that you've seen me do one, let's try a couple of more um, together. Again, please, if you would like to, work ahead on your own. Try the next couple example problems by yourself, then come on back, check your answer with mine, and see if you got the same thing I got. Let's go ahead and do a couple more of these together. I have my pre-image, and I have my vector. First, let me go ahead and um, um, name my vertices. So we'll call this one right here, that'll be A, B, C, and D. Then I need to figure out the components of my vector. How far horizontally am I shifting? How far vertically am I going to shift everyone? It looks like on this vector, it's gonna be one, two, three units to the left, shifting everybody three units left, and one, two, three, four, five. Everybody's going five units vertically. So here we go. Let's go ahead and do those transformations on everyone. I'll start at A. Three units left, five units up. Here we go. One, two, three. And five up should put A prime, if I count it correctly, right there. Let me just double check it to make sure I don't want to make a mistake. One, two, three, three, four, five. Yeah, we got it. All right, so then B is going to shift again. Three, two, well, three to our left and five up. It'll be right up there. So that's going to be my B prime. C, uh, five or two unit, uh, two units. Three units left, five units up. That's gonna put C prime right there. And D prime. Again, three units left, five units up. We go ahead, connect those guys. And here's what we see. Every point has been shifted along that translation vector, right? Do you see that? Everybody's been shifted the same magnitude in the same direction and all of those green arrows match the one that I was given, all right? Awesome job, well done. I've taken my pre-image and translated it to my image. I got one more for you here. Let's take a look at this one as well. Again, go ahead, get your vertices. Let's call this one A. B and C, then I need to figure out the components of my vector. My vector is going to move everybody down two, and then it's going to move everybody to the left. Looks like five. So down two and left five, let's move everybody in that direction. We're going to take A, down two, one, two, and over five. Looks like I get an A prime right there. B is going to come down two and over five. Puts B prime right there. C, same thing, down two and um, to the left five. 
gonna put C prime right there, draw my triangle, there it is. Let's check our vectors. B goes to B prime, A goes to A prime, C goes to C prime. And just like that, all of those triangles have the same magnitude and the same direction and all of them match the vector that I was given. All right, these are known as translations. It's when you're simply taking an object and translating it a certain distance in a certain direction. Every point has to translate the same distance in the same direction and we will use vectors to do that. And one other quick note here, just to sort of refresh your memory from chapter one, section three, a translation is what we call a rigid, sorry, that's not a very good G, there we go, a rigid motion. And remember what a rigid motion does. A rigid motion preserves, it keeps, it maintains um, size and shape. Go back, take a look at the example problems we just did. In every example problem, the size and the shape of the object did not change. It simply changed position. So a translation is a change in position. It maintains both size and shape. All right. So what we're going to do now is take a look on the next page of the notes together. We'll take a look at how you can write a translation vector given the pre-image and the image. So head on over to the next page of the notes. I'll meet you guys there.